Hello everybody. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. This is Raquel Palmisi and I'm very glad to be with you right now. Hello. Hi Cindy. Hi Joanne. Hi everybody that's coming on with me right now. I am wearing a phoenix that has been designed by my daughter, Justine Cullen. And this has very special meaning to me today. Hi, Ed. Because in a lot of ways, what the phoenix represents is something very important and very special that's happening right now as we begin to emerge from the fire of the last year and a half, from all that has been burned away, from all that has been lost, from all that has disappeared under our noses, from all we've had to let go of, and in a lot of ways, for all that we've gained. In some ways, we are like the mythical phoenix flying up out of the ashes. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to get hung up on my beloveds who are coming on here to support and share this these moments with me. So if you if you did receive my invitation today, then you know what is starting to come in for us in a very powerful way is the knowing that along with the pandemic of COVID-19, which has claimed so many hundreds of thousands of lives here in the U.S. and millions all over the world. That along with that has grown a very real and very, very uh, difficult second pandemic that is also spreading all over the world and in a lot of ways it's unchecked. And that is the pandemic of lostness, of mental illness, of emotional uh, falling apart, of emotional damage, trauma, and all the rest that has arisen in us as a result of how much life has changed during the last year and a half. It's like we watched everything almost that we know and love kind of fall apart, even as we try to maintain in a lot of ways semblances of normalcy. All the structures that we're used to, our schools, our offices, our going out to restaurants and movies, our way of life in a lot of ways just kind of instantly disappeared. A lot of us actually enjoyed this time. We actually got to get quiet, to do our work from home, to discover a new sort of way of being. At the same time, if we have children, they were going crazy. They couldn't play with their friends and all the rest. You know all of it. And the sadness of the constant images of overrun surgeries and ERs and intensive care units and hospitals and nursing homes overrun. The sadness of so many people getting sick and so many people dying so fast with no remedy. Over the course of a year, we have learned to adapt in many ways. But what it has called forth is like a scab being ripped off an abscess. A lot of what happened and what got uncovered is a deep problem in our societies all over the planet and especially here. Of deep polarization, of, of incredible mistrust for the institutions that have always, we've always taken for granted here. Our, our press, our school system, the way we work. 
our, our, de our dependence and our agreement with science. All of it began to be questioned. A lot of bad players came in to take advantage of our fear in all this. We became very suspicious of everything. And here we find ourselves knowing of friends, maybe family, who not only got sick with COVID, I know lots of people that got very ill or had this experience in their own families, friends, not only with the COVID, but we have watched many people that we know sort of sink into this other pandemic of depression, of fear, of mistrust. And some of, some of our beloveds, our clients, if we're teachers or facilitators, our friends, our family, have actually stepped off the edge from emotional problems, from emotional damage, to actual mental illness. And often they have become delusional. They have become paranoid. They don't often know that they're in the situation. They will deny that there's anything wrong with their thinking or their actions. They are stuck in the fire and they are very deeply enmeshed in their own dysfunction. And it's really hard to know what to do. I've heard and experienced myself the loss of friendships, the loss of people that I've, I've known. They've changed. They feel that I have, we have become antagonists. And in my deepest prayers and meditations, I have been asking for ways to build bridges now that we possibly are healing from the physical uh, illness of COVID, finding ways to come out of this, inventing the vaccines and medicines and ways of feeding it back into submission. And hopefully we will, you know, do what we need to do to protect ourselves and others around the world from keeping this really, really terrible disease from morphing into ever more powerful forms. As we deal with that, and in many of our personal worlds here, we can see it ebbing. We can go back outside. We can enjoy ourselves. We can meet with other people without too much worry in the moment. But this other pandemic is growing. What has been uncovered during this time is an ever deepening problem in our, in our world and especially in our Western cultures. In my prayers and in my deepest meditations, Spirit has come in and let me know that indeed this is a time of transformation. It is the time that we have been asking for getting from here to here, from here to here, the upward mobility of the spiritual journey, of the life journey. Has got us into a place of transition that is very painful. And instead of deep 
listening and reflective listening to each other. We are instead getting angry. We are stepping into our corners and we're coming out punching. And when we try not to do that, we still haven't gained the skills to build, bridge, to build bridges where we can walk each other off the cliff of our own intransigence, of our own stubborn denial. You don't have to be mentally ill to believe that yours is the truth and no one else's is. In truth, None of it is true. The only truth, the only, 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 only truth, and this is where we are trying to head and having so much trouble. The only thing that is really true is love. And how do you bring that into such a polarized fire of righteousness, of really wrong-headed people dug in and trying to have control over others by imparting ridiculous ideas. We need to not become followers we need to become leaders, every single one of us, whether we're a grocery clerk or a mother, or we're 80 years old and retired, and all we wanna do is take a cruise. We all need to come back into our hearts and find out what our survival is depending on. This may be the most important Wisdom Wednesday I've ever done, and I feel many of them have been very, very important. And I know you do too. But this one is about the future of us. We are headed to a place of non-conflict. We're headed to a place of expanded consciousness. We're headed to a place where we live interdimensionally, where we have access to more senses than just our five things that we can feel and see and know through our bodies. We're heading to a place of alchemy and right now we are in the crucible and if we want to make it out of here we're going to really have to do some deep surrender our ideas about what's wrong what happened who did what and why it's all come down the way it has are important but in context, they're not. To come out of this fire, to actually feel our great wings as the phoenix just rising up out of it. We need to be able to fly. We need to understand that we can, that a lot of these things that we're hung up in are unimportant and they're leading to mental dysfunction, to extreme paranoia and fear, to a mistrust of everything. So many of the beautiful, beloved young people that I work with feel that there are giant groups and cabals of people trying to steal and control us and implant stuff in our skin and and 
And the more that we sink into that kind of thinking and that kind of having our minds controlled like that, because that's what it is, as it blasts out at us 24 seven, the more subjugated and enslaved we become to those forces that are telling us what is true. And the less we begin to actually consult with our own higher knowing, the farther away we get from our hearts and the deeper into depression we sink. So my friends, I believe it's time to recognize the fire and make a decision of whether we are going to test our wings and rise up out of it together. We can't do it alone anymore. We are completely intertwined and intermingled. And this is a setup from the universe for us to actually realize that we are not only all connected, but we are all part of the protoplasm of creation together. We form a matrix and everything we do and say and think, dream, are all lights in that matrix constantly going off. Will we, will we take responsibility for each other? Will we allow love to begin to rule? Or will we stay? stuck in our world of ideas. Check into your hearts right now in this energy field that has been created, whether you're here with me now or you come on later. Check in and see how pummeled your heart feels, how it, how it might be in hiding, or how expanded is it? And will you in this moment set it free and unleash your heart to find the true answers for yourself that aren't dependent that much on the stories, on the ideas, but rather that accelerate our own expansion so that when we find out something that is hard to hear, that it doesn't just cause us to be angry and resentful and mistrustful and paranoid and suspicious that when we receive something that's hard to hear, that we actually open our hearts, allow ourselves to check in with our higher knowing and see how much of our conscious time is needed to get embroiled in it, to allow it to affect us emotionally, in our gut. You feel into your body right now and allow yourself to release this baggage that's been added on. If you have a friend, know someone who's in trouble. Please, please, please encourage them. Love them. Don't patronize them. Let them know if they're in trouble. Let them know that they need some help. Please do that. Please do that. 
Okay, my friends, my beloveds, I wish you well on your flight. I'll see you in the skies. All my love to you. See you next time. Aloha, Carol, and mahalo. Thank you. Bye.